Okay, this is how you develop a pant sloper. We're gonna start with the front pant sloper. And the first thing you need is your out seam. So for your tissue paper, you're gonna need a piece of paper that's as long from your waist to the floor. And um, it needs to be at least as wide as one fourth of your full hip circumference. So make sure that it's at least that wide. Um, so we're gonna draw the out seam first and it needs to be over on the very edge of your paper because all the rest of the pen development will happen in the middle. This is your out seam. So the point at the top is A, the point at the bottom is B. And once again, that's your out seam. Then up here at A, you're gonna decide how big you want your waistband to be. For a regular pair of pants, jeans, trousers, anything like that, anywhere from an inch and a fourth to an inch and a half is standard. Anything above three inches is no longer a waistband, it's a yoke. So it's kind of designer's choice. You choose how long you want that to be, but then put that point in wherever you're deciding to put in your waistband. This is B down here. Then you're going to take your crotch depth measurement. This is the measurement you took while sitting on a table and you are going to draw it down this out seam line um, from A. You're just going to put that point in and that is D. That's where the bottom of your crotch will be. And then we need to find our hip line that's in here in the middle. And proportionate theory says that it is one third of the distance from C to D should be your hip line. At this point, I would do a math check and just see, because on your measurements, you measured from where your full waist was to where your full hip was. Find out where that measurement actually is and put that point where it belongs. Don't just rely on proportionate theory for this, but that needs to be coming from A, which will be the top of pant not from C, which is the top of the waist or the bottom of the waistband. So either one third of the distance from C to D, if you're using proportion theory or actual math on your body from A to wherever your full hip line is, put E. From F, we're just, we're gonna draw out this way. And this is going to be um, one fourth of your hip circumference minus a fourth of an inch. So if my hips were 40, I would cut that in fourth, I'd get 10, I'd minus a quarter of an inch, I'd get nine and three quarters, and that's how big I'd make this line. This point out here becomes F. Now we are going to just square out some of this. So from C, we're just gonna square it out until it's in line with F. That becomes H and we're going to square it out from D and that becomes G. We're just going to draw those lines. Okay. Um, then we're going to um, add to our crotch curve here. So whatever you're going to take your hip circumference, divide that by 16, and then you're going to subtract between 3 eighths of an inch and um, boy, between 5 eighths and, and 3 fourths of an inch. So that's just a comfort call. So I just expand that out and that becomes I. Okay, so that's the three, the three fourths of an inch that I chose. Now from, we extend out that line. 
So the line at crotch line is going to come out all the way to I. Now we are going to find the midpoint between I and D, no longer G, but between I and D. Find the midpoint, that becomes J. And once you have J, you're going to draw a crease line all the way down to the bottom of your ankle. This is your longitudinal line, or it helps with your horizontal balance lines, or it can become your grain line. So down here, you have a point at the ankle, and that becomes K, and it comes all the way to J. After you have that, then you're going to extend that all the way up to the CH line. But not all the way up to A. You can see A is kind of floating out here by itself. And we're not really developing any of the lines on this side of the sloper currently. We're going to figure out where to put the knee. Now, if you've taken a body measurement from the waist down the side of your body to where the top of your patella is, you can put that meth measurement in. If we're working on proportionate theory, you're going to find the midpoint between J and K, and you're going to put a mark on your paper wherever that is. And then you're going to go three inches up from that. And that is going to become your knee point, or that is L. So this would be the midpoint. But we remember when we talked about proportionate theory, the top half of your leg is uh, a one and a half times your head and the bottom part of your leg is uh, two and a half times. So that's why the knee is not at the midpoint. It's above that. Uh, once we have the knee on, you're just going to draw a square guideline out on either side of the knee. Length doesn't really matter because, once again, we have, aren't developing the side of the sloper yet. So just put it on there as a guideline. Down here at the hemline, you're going to determine how wide you need your hemline. And once again, you can't have, this is very similar to the sleeve, you can't have right around the ankle or you can't get your foot all the way through that hole without some kind of egress. So you need to point your toe and then measure from the top of your foot around the heel of your foot and that is the smallest your opening could possibly go. So uh, for me, my measurement is 12. That means my hem lines can't be any smaller than 12 where I've made sleeping bags for my feet. And remember, this is just the front sloper, not the front and back sloper. So I only need half of that circumference. So I would only need to work with six inches. And then um, oh, geez, I just totally lost it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have six inches on total in this, which um, means I need to put half of that on one side of K and half of that on the other side of K. Now, since I'm working in half scale, you can see mine is obviously not six inches, but that's because six inches would be my half scale number, which means my front half would be three. So I'd have an inch and a half on either side. That's why mine looks not like the math that I told you. Up here at D, you're gonna measure in three-eighths of an inch. Nope, you're going to measure in one-eighth of an inch. And this becomes point O. And so from O to M, you're going to draw a straight line. This is because pants taper. And then P, wherever this new line you just drew from O to M, wherever it intersects here at the knee line, you are going to measure in a fourth of an inch from there. That 
becomes P. And you're going to measure from there to M. And I trust this. Trust me, this will all make sense later. How we're going to connect all these lines because this looks really sketchy. And I know that. But it's going to work. Here at L, we want to know half of the front knee width which just means you need to know what your knee circumference is here at L. And uh, it's, it's about the same, unless you have really crazy knees, whatever the distance from L to P is, if you put that same distance over here from L to your new point that is going to be Q, it should fit your pants. Then you are going to go from M to Q, I mean N, sorry, to Q and draw a straight line and you will have done the bottom half of your sloper from the knee down. You can connect M to N across the bottom and that's your hemline. This is your knee line. This is your crease line or your longitudinal line, depending on how you want to measure that. Now, if you need to check your knee circumference, this is a good time to check your knee circumference. Just make sure you're going all the way over the top of the patella. Okay. Now you're going to use your curved ruler um, or eyeball it, however you want to do. And you're going to kind of, I start with a really light um, straight line from I to Q. And I usually draw it in pencil. Then I need to know what the distance of that is because I need to cut that in thirds. And then I need to mark those thirds. Just so I know where those are. Okay. Now at this top third, we're going to make a mark in um, either an, anywhere from an eighth to a quarter inch. And it just depends on how much saddle baggy your thighs are and mine are you know, more significant than I'd like them to be. So I'm going to go closer to the eighth of an inch stage, not the quarter of an inch stage. Then you're going to draw a slightly curved line from Q that hits this new point to I. Like I said, it's just going to be slightly curved. This is going to become your inseam right here. Now over here on this side, from D to P, we're going to find the midpoint. So that would be my midpoint there. And we're going to bring that midpoint in an eighth of an inch. And once again, we're going to draw a slightly curved line from O, not D, but O to P. And it's going to hit that. That point we just made. Okay, so you can see we're starting to develop the thigh here. If you need to do a math double check, find out where your thigh line is and make sure that your circumference here is going to fit your thigh. Okay, now I'm going to scoot my paper down and then zoom in just a little as we're developing the top part so you can kind of see what it is I am doing. <clears throat> now, we haven't done any of the curve up here in the hip area. We just, we've finished the sloper from the crotch line down. That's all we've done. 
This is your crotch line. Okay, up here at H, we are going to measure in towards the pants, anywhere from a half inch to five eighths of an inch. That becomes R. And then from R, we're gonna measure this way and we're gonna take our waist circumference and divide it by four. And then we are going to add um, a fourth of an inch for ease. So we would start measuring from here. Okay, now it may be slightly out of C, it may be slightly in from C. Depends on how rectangular of a person you are. So it's all good. It's all going to work. Then this becomes S. And we are going to draw a slightly curved line from S. It comes out and hits this exterior line at E and then comes in to O. Okay, now we just have to make sure we smooth this out a little bit down here, just so we don't get riding jobber pants that look kind of sketchy. So now we have our out seam is totally developed, our in seam is totally developed, and all we're missing here is the crotch line. So from S, if we extend this line out up into the waistband at the same angle or same rate of uh, direction from S, but we're gonna continue it up a quarter of an inch, that becomes T. And we're just gonna draw a smooth line from R to T and it's gonna stay on the line most of the way. until we get right over here and then it'll come up to T and T comes down to S and that completes our out seam. Then we're gonna draw a straight line from R to F. From G, we're gonna measure up one inch This becomes U. Then from U to I, we're gonna draw a straight line. This isn't a real line, so I'm just gonna use my pencil. Then I'm gonna find the midpoint of that line. That becomes V. Now from F, we're gonna draw a curved line that comes down and hits V before it comes out to I. Just like that, and we've made our crotch curve. Then if you want to put in your fly zipper line, your fly zipper line would stop here. This is your hip line. We don't actually develop the waistband. Your waistband gets developed as a separate piece. So this would be a complete front sloper.